Okie dokie, and we meet again. Video number two of the Move Language tutorial series. We are going to build our first Move module or smart contract. We are going to start declaring primitive types, the integer type, as well as the string types, okay? And not only that, we are also going to work with the standard Move library. This is very important. This is one of the foundational aspects in the Move programming language that we have to discuss. With the standard library, we can then import functions that will help us do debug in our function calls, okay? And we need to build that first function because we need to test when we declare those types, we want to interact with those types. In order for us to test that function, we are also going to start looking at test in move. We are building a test function in the move module that will allow us to make calls into that function. And we should be able to display values that we store in variables that we are defining as type string and type integer. Let's not waste any more time. Let's move. <laughs> On the last video, you remember that we got all the way to the account that we set up in Aptos. Okay, so now we have an account value. This account value, ladies and gentlemen, it's the address of the move module deployed in the Aptos blockchain in the case of Aptos. We are working with the Aptos blockchain, so it means that when I define a module, I am going to be passing this account value as the identifier in the storage in the blockchain. So if I need to make calls into that module, I am going to be referring to the account. The account, it's my account, the wallet of the deployer, in this case, the developer wallet, okay? I am going to define a variable in the move tom package file. This variable will be used to reference the module that we are going to write. Check this out. So under addresses, I am going to type net to def underscore ADDR. And with this variable, I can then define the module pointing to this net to def address. Okay. Now all I have to do is I'm going to be passing this account value right here. I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to copy it and we will add that to the variable that we just declared and boom. Okay. Done. Now I am going to save this file and now let's build that move smart contract. This will be our first one, our move module. I'm going to go to sources. I'm going to create a new file and this new file, let's call this sample one because we're going to be building a couple of sample modules. Okay. Sample one and we are adding this to be a move file. Okay. We start the module. Okay. So we are defining a module called after the wallet or the account. So I have to now reference the variable that I define in that Tom file on the move module itself. So I'm going to say net to def. ADDR. Now that I attached that account to the module, now I can define the name of the module. Okay. I'm going to say sample one. Okay. So this is how we start that module. The first thing that I'm going to do in the module, is going to be importing the standard address library. I'm going to explain to you what this is. When we define an import, when we are defining a use statement on the module, I'm going to say use, right? When I say use, I am going to be importing another module onto this particular module. In the move language, there is a standard module, STD. If you remember not long ago, we defined this to be my account address. Well, the STD address, this will be the first address defined in move, which is going to be zero one, it's going to be zero X one. This is exactly the first address in the range of addresses available in move. Okay. When I do STD, I now have to call the module that I want to import. So from STD, I am going to be importing debug module. From this module, if we do a double colon, so every time that I go down in the level of the library, so if I go down into the module debug, now I can import a particular function. Okay. So I can then say, let's say I'm going to import print because I need to print values in the test call. So if I do a test function to confirm that the functions are working as expected or giving me the output that I need to obtain, then I use print to show that. Okay. So this is how we do that use standard. We are importing debug. There's other attributes that I can import, or I'm going to say another module that I can import. I can say from standard, I, I'm going to say use standard. And now from here, I can import the string module. Okay. From the string module, I now can import the string type. 
that could be one import. Or I could say I want to import multiple types or multiple functions. I can say the following. I can say I want to get string and I want to also work with Unicode. If I type UTF-8, that means that I'm going to be also importing that function that allows me to convert that to Unicode, okay? In Move, when we work with string values, we are using byte strings. So we are handling byte strings, which the output is not stored natively as a string. It's stored as byte. And we have to convert that to human readable string. So if I do this, right, right now, I can now use string so I can define any strings. Also, I can say from that string, I want you to convert that to Unicode or I want you to, to translate that. So this is a function to convert to Unicode. Let's talk about the integer types. One of the primitive types in move, it's going to be the integers, unsigned integers. If we declare a variable in the global scope of the module, that means that that variable is going to be permanently stored in the module. When we deploy the module, that cannot change. That is going to remain with that value assigned. So if I say constant and let me define ID, I'm going to say ID. If I say ID and if I declare this to be U64, unsigned integer 64, I then specify a value of 100, for example. That means that this value is going to remain permanent on this module. We cannot update those values. Immutable, variable that is going to be immutable. I cannot make any changes to that. Now, let's say I want to make a change to a variable, okay? So if I want to make a change to a variable, then I cannot do that in the global scope. I can do that through a function. I am going to define function set value. By the way, when we define a function in module, we initialize that fun. There's a different function visibility that we can apply to those functions. We, we will cover on video number three. Function name is going to be set value and I can pass arguments. We will work with arguments on the next video. I just want to show you that I can create an integer that can be updated, right? But it's an integer that I have to either pass values or I have to define values inside the function. So I can pass values as an argument, right? I can say user ID. That user ID can be a string type. I can do that. I can say user ID will be U128. I can do that as an argument or what I can do is I can define here in case I not necessarily have to provide an argument. I am going to just define it here value underscore ID and I can now define also to be U64 and I am going to say this value is 200, right? Now I can do the following. I can say print. Remember, we have defined print because we have defined, declared that we want to import print from debug. I could also do this. Check this out. I could say debug and remove all this. And instead I can call it down here. So I can say debug here, right? And now I can call print. I'm going to say print and inside print. Now I can point to the reference of this variable so that I can print it in output. Okay. I have to start value ID. Okay. So I want to pass value ID and that if everything goes well, we we should be able to display this when we call that function. Now, if I control S, I'm going to save it. I want to make sure that I'm not going to run into any errors. Okay, so let's do that. So I am opening my terminal session and I'm going to say aptos move compile. Okay, let's see if we run into any errors. Okay, we did not run into any errors, but it's actually giving me a warning. Hey, you haven't used this, nor you haven't used this, okay? Which is which is expected, but I know that I am not running into any errors and I am not using because we're only declaring integers. We haven't declared anything to store strings, okay? Let's fix that. I want to declare a string, right? So if I want to declare a string, I am going to say let st string ID or string value and now I can say this is going to be a string and it's let. I can update that at least on this function, the local scope of that function. So if I do a string type, I cannot pass the, let's say I cannot do this. I cannot just go here and define my strings, right? I cannot do that. I will have to say that this is a byte string, literal. The way that I can do that is I can define this to be UTF. Remember, UTF-8. And now inside here, I am going to pass the lowercase b, which tells move this is going to be a byte string. I'm going to now define string itself, okay? And now we have effectively declare a string value, string val. Now, if I want to print that, I can also say debug, right? And I want to print, point to the reference, to string val. 
And I want to save that and let's take a look now if we compile, if we see those warnings that we saw before. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clear again and I'm going to attempt to compile once again and see how that goes, okay? Beautiful, not a single error, perfect. Okay, I wanna test. I wanna make sure that I can see the output of the two print statements that we have defined in that function. What I can do, I can define a test function, okay? And we are going to be working with tests very often in this tutorial series. With the test function, without having Having to deploy this on the Aptos blockchain or any blockchain, I can test and I can make sure that the function is doing what it's supposed to be doing, okay? I'm going to say test. What I'm doing right now is defining an attribute that will be assigned to the statement that I'm going to do below this attribute. This is telling move that the function or the object that I'm going to be defining down is declared under this attribute. So if I do function and I'm going to say test function, okay? And now if I do this, if I do set, value, I'm effectively testing with that test function. I'm going to call this function right here. Okay. Set value. I'm going to save it. If I want to run this, the only way that I can run this is with aptos move test. Let's do that. Let's clear once again. And I'm going to say aptos move test. And let's see how that goes. There we go. What do we see? We see from the debug module that we imported, we are doing print because we're passing print and I can see the value of 200, which is what we pass in that variable. And then next, the other print statement, it's the net to depth string. Awesome. We're not done yet. One more thing. Let's say I want to pass this ID value from my function, my internal function in the move module to this test function. Okay. What I can do now is the following at after the arguments in any function, if we place a call colon, we can define a return for that function. So I can say colon, and because this is type U64, I can return that function U64 as the return type when I make this function call. So I can say U64, and after I do that, now I can say here, let ID value, right? And now this ID value, I can return this ID from this function, get that stored in this variable and print it down here. Let's take a look at that. We are keeping those two debugs. And then after that, I am going to say ID. Why? Because this is, again, this is in the global scope of the module. I can call it anywhere. Pass ID is type U64. I'm returning that type. And now I should be able to get the ID of 100 stored here in the test function. Okay. So if I now do this, once again, debug, print, and I point to the reference to ID value, save it. Let's test. Let's see what happens. What do we see here? We see the first print, the 200, which is the internal integer that we defined, the string, and finally the ID of 100, which is part of the global scope, but it was passed from the function to the test function that we just generated. We mentioned with strings, if I pass UTF-8, I'm going to define a byte, but I can also pass it as a byte string. So what I can do now, I am going to do the following. I'm going to say let string byte Okay. And instead of me defining this to be a string, I am going to be defining this as a byte. So I'm going to be passing a vector and I'm going to be explaining vector in the following video because it's very important to dedicate to the vector type. Okay. Vector. And now here, what I can pass inside here is U8, which is basically telling it's byte. Now what I can pass then, instead of me wrapping this in UTF-8, I can pass it natively with byte and then the string. So in this case, all I have to do is pass the B and we are going to say this is a byte string. Now what I can do here is the following. If I print this value, we are not going to see this byte string. Okay, so we have a space here. Here we go. We are not going to see this displayed on the debug. Instead, we should see the hex value in byte because this was defined as byte type. But if we now pass the UTF to it, then we should be able to see the string value. Let's check this out. Let's do it one at a time. So I'm going to say debug and we are going to say print and we are passing the reference to string byte. Okay, I'm going to save this and let's see how that goes. My terminal clear. Let's see what the output is. Ah, what did I told you? This is not the native string. This is a byte value. How can I convert now this to human readable strings? I can now pass UTF-8 to it. Okay, so let's do that. What I'm going to do now I can say UTF-8 and now I can pass this to the function and we should be able to see this instead, instead of the hex value or the string value, okay? I'm gonna control S, I'm gonna go back, give it a shot. Let's see what we get. 
Hmm, there you go. That's the big difference. We converted from byte using UTF to strings. Awesome. You know me. Time for a quiz. Which module import syntax is correctly used to import the print function from the debug module? Is it A? Is it B? Is it Z? Or is it D? Hmm. Well, if you answer C, you are correct. Coming up next, we are continuing with primitive types. This time we are going to work with addresses and Boolean types. We are going to start discussing function visibility, which is very important. It's definitely something that we must dominate in order for us to completely dominate the move language. And also very important, we cannot forget about error handling. This is it for video number two. Let's go to video number three.